All right, it's Alec Kinski, uh, joined by my co-host Alex Karamanos on another episode of uh, Commit Corner. We're joined here by uh, Tennessee Volunteer Commit Kennedy Chandler. Kennedy, thanks for joining us, man. Uh, no problem. I'll, uh, you know, I'm going to get right into it uh, for the for the volunteer fans watching this. Um, you know, you, you committed a little bit back. Uh, talk about, you know, why you committed to Tennessee and uh, I guess how excited you are to get there. Yeah, so Tennessee, when they first offered me, you know, Coach Kim English, you know, he just recruited me really hard and just told me at first they had, uh, saw me play in the first session, the UIBL session, and, you know, he really wanted to offer me, but, you know, it was Rick Barnes' choice to give me the offer, so I was really excited about that. You know, I really like Tennessee, you know, state, my state, and, you know, they came to my school, offered me ever since then. Our relationship just got better and better, and when I took my official visit there, you know, it just felt like home, really, you know, just – the fans, I went to the football game, went to basketball practice, just the way Greg Barnes got on them and just players that he coached, like TJ Ford, Kevin Durant, PJ Tucker, all those other players, you know. I know he could push me to be the best player I could be. I took to TJ Ford, you know, he's he texted me and told me what Rick Barnes will be expecting of his PGs. And I'm just really excited to play there next year. For so, sure. Uh, yeah. So I know you were uh, talking about the coaches, who are the some of the main coaches that were recruiting you? I know you just mentioned some, and maybe give us the rundown of the pitch that they gave you, Kennedy, if you could, maybe how they were going to use you in the system, things like yeah. that. So really, only only coach that recruited me is Rick, uh, coaching him English. I talked to Rick Barnes a couple of times. So, I mean, all the other coaches, they probably, I think they recruited different kids, and I don't know how it works, different areas, but – Coach English is the only one that recruited me. So, and Rick Barnes, they I talked to them too. So, you know, I just very good relationship with Coach English. I could call him any time. I could watch, I, he watched film with me, even though I wasn't even committed with him. We watched film with my game and just study what I need to do, what I could do better. And just, there's a relationship we had to my dad. You know, they talk, they talk every day. Every day I talk to, I could call Coach English. Just relationship we had together just made me really like him and Tennessee. Yeah, Kim's on the short list of, uh, my favorite coaches I work with. Did you watch any uh, Kim English film? Uh, then he always, he he always tell me he could he read to play me one on one when I get down there. So we go play each other one on one, only yeah. one time. So he he, he was uh yeah he was he was quite the player during his time at uh, uh Missouri. He uh yeah he was uh, certainly entertaining to watch. Um you know I, I I'll get right into you know kind of our bread and butter which is is circuit coverage. I actually got the. Uh, the Mo Can versus everyone shirt on for you right now. Like uh, too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, you, you joined uh, before your sophomore year playing as an underclassman. You won a Peach Jam title. That's very, very rare. Um, talk about, I guess, the, that uh, experience, right? And then just the, the Mo Can program in general, what it's done for you. Yeah, so Mo Can, they just, I don't even know how that contact, I think that contact my dad. I don't know how I went. It was Coach Perry. Coach Perry is a great coach. You know, he didn't coach us. He took a job at UMKC, and ever since he didn't coach us in Pijam, but he the one that had me be the player I'm at, I'm at today. Him and Coach Neff, and they just practice. I just it took a sacrifice for me. I, I had to go practice there every weekend. I wasn't even here on the weekends. It's just like it was a sacrifice I had to make. Like if I want to hang with friends, do I want to stay in Memphis, or do I want to go practice there every weekend with them? So that's why the sacrifice I had to make and. I practiced with them every weekend. We just got better every day. And we did, they like getting us ready, prepared for college, you know, watching film, just scout report, just stuff like that. We like, we didn't have our phones like on tournaments. We didn't have our phones. They didn't want to look at them. So it just, it's the mindset they have for us. And that's how I think we really want it. Like we just focused, no, no phones, not worry about social media, anything like that during the times we played. And we were just locked in and it was just, it's probably one of the best teams I it's the best team I played on my whole my whole life. Yeah, and you know, the Peach Jam titles obviously uh uh hammers home that fact. Uh talk about that experience a little bit. You know, is it, it looking back on it, like, you know, what what were you feeling, especially during that uh, you know, Peach Jam championship game against, you know, Jalen Green, Amari Burnett, team why not? You know, what what how how did that help build you as a player? Yeah, that was the best feeling ever, you know, me when the PJM as a sophomore, you know, I really thought he was going to make that shot and the tip in, it was scary. Like PJM just like, it's like winning like a national championship a little bit, you know, it's just some going against everybody, all top players in the nation. 
and you try to win it. It's like it's like a big thing, and we won it. You know, it just we 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 work hard for that, and I think we deserve we deserve that. No, and that I think that serves, uh, um, you know, credit to the uh, organization as well, because you know I've been covering yeah. Mocan for a while. You had a team with Trey Young and Michael Porter on it, right? So it wasn't the most talented Mocan team, but watching what you guys did coming together as a as right. a team and the defense you guys play, it leads me into my next question perfectly. Defense, defense, defense is preached by Coach Luke Barnwell at Sunrise. You mentioned you had to make a choice, right? Getting out of uh, Memphis for the summer, hanging out with friends. Obviously, you made that choice for high school as well. Talk about transferring to Sunrise. Obviously, off to a really strong start to your senior season. How it's, I guess, compatible with the Mocan program? Well, you know, Sunrise, you know, I really didn't think about going to a prep school at all. Like, I, my dad asked me about it. Like, all the other prep schools, like, do you want to go to IMG? Because I knew that. Trey Draper from IMG, my vert. I knew the coach from my vert, you know, but I really didn't think about going to any. Like, I didn't know what Sunrise was at first, honestly. Like, but I know they was coming to uh, Mocan. They they, was, they had a real close relationship with Mocan. And Matt, Matt from, no, from Mocan, he told me about Sunrise. And Coach Rod, who has an OSP now, was telling me about Sunrise, stuff like that. So, you know, I thought it was like, it was like family, like all connected. You know, they did same style of play offense as Mocan, and that same style of play from Mocan and Sunrise is what Tennessee offense does. So you know, I'm just everything was just like plan. It's something I pl- thought about. Like this gonna help me get ready for Tennessee. Kaluka hold me accountable. He go make me the best player I could be, make me a better leader. At first, I wasn't even, like usually I wasn't talking at all. Now I talk the most on the court and off the court being a leader now i never did that he like took me out of my conference zone saying this we got to do or like you think i'm gonna be bad coach rick barnes gonna be even worse on you. you don't be a better leader so i think coach luke like defense is a key thing like i i take pride in my defense like i don't want my man scoring me at all and that's just some that coach luke and all the other players on the team take pride in too and you uh, know i think we probably the best defensive team in the country, you know, we, we, we take pride in it. For sure. Yeah. Statistically last, uh, last two years, Sunrise has been probably on, on your way to a third. Go ahead, Alex. I know I just yeah. cut you off. No problem. So Daniel, let's break down your game a little bit. Six, one point guard, uh, easily one of the top, if not the best point guard in your class. Uh, you love passing the ball and you're great at putting your teammates in the best scoring positions played very downhill. Uh, great scoring point guard. And like we've been talking about in this segment, you're relentless on the defensive end as well. Uh, how do you see yourself fitting in the Tennessee system? Well, you know, I just, just about the way that guards that had like TJ4, he had, we had like a long, we had like a nice little talk about what Rick Barnes expected for me. And just Rick Barnes loved his point guards. And I think Rick Barnes will love me as a point guard and what I'm going to bring into the program and just me helping the team and just being the best player I could be and being a leader. Yeah, you keep bringing up being a leader. Um, It's tough to teach being a leader, right? Is there something that kind of, like you said, how Coach Luke uh, coaches you and just kind of realizing that you need to be more vocal? Is that something you kind of just flipped on and realized one day, like, hey, this is needed for me to make it? Yeah, you know, I was, I've been, people have been telling me like at USA counts, like you gotta be more vocal. I was just like, a, I was, even though I was like killing, like killing on the court, like playing good, I just wasn't being like a vocal. And as a point guard, that's something you gotta do, which I really, really didn't recognize that in my sophomore year. But junior year, I was recognized, I was speaking more. And now I'm just, I'm doing way better than I was before. And, that's just something you got to do as a point guard. You got to be more vocal and a leader on the court and hold the teammates accountable. Yeah, I think, you know, I, back in the day when I played, you know, that's something you have to remind yourself of is, you know, as a point guard, you are, you know, your teammates are definitely depending on you. Um, and, you know, your uh, your your composure and your ability to, you know, guide your teammates, that's, that's I mean, you look at the NBA right now, uh, every point guard's talking nonstop, right? So, um, when, when you look at your game right now, what do you think, uh, you know, outside of leadership was clearly being worked on and, and, and being vocal. What do you, what do you think is the most important part of your game to improve right now? Probably most people like, like question my shooting, but I could shoot it. That just, I just want to make it consistent. And I, you guys could look, it's getting way better and people starting to realize like some people go under the screen, but now 
I could do both. So I don't know which one they gonna do now. So me just and it's getting way better. I just ready to show show to other people that what I've been working on and get my jump shot way better every day. Yeah, and with your quickness, if you even give a you know a hesitation or a thought of shooting, right? That's gonna help you get by your defender for sure. Right. So, yeah. Um, Alex, go go ahead. Yeah. So obviously the goal for you, Kennedy, is to make it to the NBA, be a pro basketball player. Um, how do you think Tennessee will help you reach this goal, this all-time lifetime goal of yours? Well, you know, I just had a talk with, like I was talk with Come English and Rick Barnes. They could just go hold. They get, they could get me ready to make it there. You know, it take baby steps. You know, worry about college first, then worry about NBA. I'm not. Worry about playing college basketball right now and getting better every day, getting stronger, getting improving my game on all all levels, and just they go they go get me ready for it, and they know if I do what I'm supposed to do, I'm gonna make it to the NBA. You know, it sounds like you're pretty locked in, obviously, to Tennessee, but we'd be remiss if we didn't ask this question because obviously, uh, several kids have gone the G League route. You know, I, I imagine they're you know looking at you as a uh, you know a potential fit for that. I want to ask you specifics whether or not you're uh, entertaining the idea, but um, was that something you like expected when you're getting recruited? Like, Oh, wow. There's this whole nother path that could be an option for myself. No, I didn't. I didn't expect it at all. I don't even know. I really don't know like about all that. My father knows all about that. I think they called him almost raw Strickland. I think I don't talk about me coming to the G league and stuff like that, but it was, it was some of first thought, but, no, not after that. I felt like I want. I told my dad I wanted to take the college route. I really don't, I want to have that college experiment, experience and win the – going to the Final Four, win the National Championship. That's some dream goal of mine. So I want to keep all my dream goals on my list and try to accomplish them. Yeah, and those experiences certainly can't be, you know, can't be replaced. I would, you know, consider it a badge of honor, right? You're, you're taking that call. That's, uh, you know, kind of stamps where you are. I'll uh, – last question uh, I have. Getting on Tennessee campus, right? You meet someone. They have no clue you're a basketball player, right? How would you describe Kennedy Chandler, the, you know, the, the person? What do, you, what do you bring to the table? For me, I'm just going to – I'm a nice person off the court, cool to be around, just – you get to know me better, you know, just something I would do. And just we could be friends – we could be real cool friends and get to know each other more about each other. Absolutely. Alex, anything else to add? Nope, that's it. I think we got it all covered. Man, I appreciate your time, Kennedy. I know uh, minutes are valuable here. Uh, stay safe over the holidays. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. Good luck to Sunrise this season. Thank you. Yep, take care, man. Thanks, Kennedy. Thank you.